Hi everyone and welcome back to our greenhouse series and again for those of you just joining us my name is Susan Lester Ryan part of Lester's Farm Market and we are here to show you what you can be doing with your flowers. So today I am going to be doing one of my favorite things blending a container with you and today we're going to be doing a mixed container and by that I mean what we also call it as is an informal one because it's not just a pattern there's a bunch of different flowers there's different flowers different colors different textures different sizes all of them it's a beautiful madness basically is what I also like to call it okay so there's going to be every color of the rainbow in this pot that we possibly can fit into it I'm planting in about a 16 inch pot and this one is going to be all the way around so when you start to think about where and what you want to plant you need to think about how much sun it's going to get if it's something that can be seen all the way around or if it's going to go against a house um, and you also want to know if what you want what is your preference so is it a beautiful madness or is it more of the pattern so informal formal there is also a formal video that I done a few years back as well so you can certainly check that out um, so today we're gonna learn how to put together all those different textures again when it comes to putting together a container or a garden it really comes down to your own personal preference and of course what works for your area so something that works for me might not work for you and that's totally fine Remember when you're putting together a container, you have those three components, the thriller, which is the wow factor, the spiller, which is what cascades over, and then the fillers, which is kind of the in-betweens that connect everything and pull everything together. All right. Okay. Let's get started. So um, just to save time, I've already gone around and picked out my plants. So as I mentioned, this is a all the way around, which means I'm putting trailers on all sides of it and it's also going to be full sun so yay that means i have so many options it does mean i don't want to pick those shade plants like your non-stops because they will actually fry up in the sun but it means i have all those beautiful dahlias and geraniums and dianthus and osteos and so so much more okay so i'm going to start by putting my spike in the center so for those who it's first time planting or not really sure what to do with these pots you do need to take them out so best to do take one hand hand by the bottom squeeze pull Look at those roots, lovely. I'm just gonna put that pot aside. And then a spike really doesn't need that much root. It's pretty, pretty vigorous um, root wise. So I am gonna haul off some of it. When you go to plant, hold on, I'm gonna switch you around one okay, second. So when you go to plant beforehand, obviously you need to fill up your soil. So right now I have it level with the edge. And keep in mind that this is going to be the new home for the plants. So you want to make sure that there's ample space and soil so that there's lots of room for the water, for the leaves to grow out more, and to fertilize, of course, too. Okay? You want to have soil that has um, things like perlite, so that's those white things, and other sticks um, that are going to help with the drainage and water retention. So this is like a peat-based uh, soil. So make sure you're always just reading what's into your soil before you put it in your pot. Now, I'm gonna flip you back around again. Okay, let's get planting. So I'm gonna angle you down, hopefully you can see. So right into the middle of my pot, taking one hand, I'm going to make a hole. Let's see, change it again so you can see a bit better. There we go. Excuse the mess of flowers around me. Okay, so I'm making a hole nice and big. So you never just want to push it down, okay? Dig a hole, see I'm moving the soil aside, and then I'm tucking it around the base making sure it's standing straight up and down. So do not have it on a roller coaster where it goes, woo, you wanna make sure it's straight up and down. All right, from here, triangles and squares are your best friend when it comes to uh, container gardening and your flower bed gardening. So because of this size of a pot and it's pretty tall, I am gonna go with a square, which means I'm gonna go with my lovely bright yellow dahlia. I'm gonna go with my nice pink geranium. Okay, and I always get the question, how do I know how many plants I can fit into a pot? Well, this is how. So uh, as you see right now, I have everything still in the pots and I'm just laying them here, making sure that I am content with what I have together. And um, then from there, I know that there's enough space. So these are gonna be my four main flowers. So I have my violet dianthus, pink geranium, yellow dahlia, and the dark blue osteo. All right, so I'm gonna plant this main square. And if you look really closely, bring you up so you can see. All right, so there's space between all of them. They're not squat together and you want to do that so that you make sure that they're not going to get, um, you wanna have good airflow consistently throughout the growing season. Okay, so I'm going to quickly plant some of these. So uh, again, just kind of loosening up those roots there. 
little tiny bit and I really mean like a little tiny bit just to help them kind of get going and growing into their new homes when you're putting them together I'm kind of looking for the tallest part of the flower so the osseo I have the tallest part of the flower into the center because where it's all the way around I want the tallest into the center and then I'm working my way out so of course on the edges that's where I'm going to have my spillers this dahlia for instance because the way it's growing there's kind of like a flat side here so I'm going to put that in towards the middle just to kind of help fill out the posh the quickest way possible as you're planting as well you're going to want to make sure you haul off any of the dead leaves okay there you go uh, geraniums are one that you have a front and a back so right here is the bald spot so I'm putting that in towards the spike and then that way the leaves are going to help fill in the front of that pot there while also not pushing out the other flowers because the leaves are pretty strong. And then the dianthus here, again, just loosening up the roots and popping this right in here. Okay, so now I'm gonna make sure that they're all standing up straight. Might wanna fix this spike. So the spike, the, uh, the blades of the spike are gonna be growing through it and that's fine. Sometimes what I find is that by the time you get those four in, the spike is after moving. So you just wanna kind of, you know, shift it around a little bit. Okay, so now from here, what I'm going to do in this pot, because there's still a nice space here, there's also a nice space in the back. So I'm going to put two other kind of nice filler bushy plants, and then I'm going to add in my spillers. So here we go. So right now I have my pink, yellow, I have a kind of a darker pink fuchsia, and a purple. I don't have any blue, white, orange, or red. So that being said, that's going to lead me to some options. I'm going to use a euphorbia for a little filler lovely little flower and I think I'm going to put that back here so the euphorbia is going to kind of grow up in between everything which is why I love using it as a filler again just loosening up those roots very very loosely um, sometimes what I'll do when I run out of space of scooping the soil to the side is I, I will take this fulls, just kind of tuck it on the side there you can always add the soil back in I find that it's really hard to top up the soil. A lot of people want to lay the plants in and then toss the soil around it, but you're not really gonna have them placed the same way once they all get settled in water and stuff. So I always suggest to kind of move around the soil that's already in there and then fill it in afterwards. Okay, up front here. So this is the euphorbia. I'll turn it back around so that you can see that. So that's filling in that space there. Lovely, love this contrast with that. White is also one of those colors that kind of help tie everything in. So I always suggest to put some kind of white into your container. Now I am gonna go with this lovely bright orange, Sun Patient. So Sun Patients, despite their name, can actually handle uh, shade as well, but they do well in the really hot, sunny areas of Newfoundland. You know, those few random spots. No, there is actually a, more than what you would think around. Okay, so then I have my two fillers, my two lovely fillers here. So now that's there. And again, I love the contrast, okay? So right now I have all the colors except for blue, which leads me to picking my favorite, Lobelia. So Lobelia is fantastic in mixed containers. Uh, you do want to make sure though when you're watering your pot that you are directly watering your Lobelia because it does not like to get dried out. Okay, let's see, this Lobelia. So because I have this purple over here, I'm gonna put my Lobelia, because it's in the same color family, over this way. I find that with the purples and the blues, you can't put too many of those side by side sometimes, especially in a mixed pot, because it's really noticeable. Whereas the hotter colors, so the pinks and the reds and the oranges and yellows, you can kind of put those next to each other and it's a bit more forgiving. But again, it all comes down to personal preference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's kind of filling out that space. And again, you want to make sure you're leaving space. Do not put them close together. So I know right now in that camera, it looks like there's lots of space or that they're really close, but I can fit my hand in between all of these plants right now. And I know that they're going to fill out. So I'm content with that. Another lovely spiller is Verbena. I love the cluster blooms. So again, we're working with a bunch of different textures here today. So we had that nice airy euphorbia back in the back um, and then we have the big bold leaves of the dahlia and the geranium uh, then we have the cluster blooms like the geranium and the verbena we have the daisy blooms 
we have the uh, kind of the tropical looking blooms. So there's a bunch of different textures working together in this pot. And that's what makes this a beautiful madness because even though it's not the same, okay, there's a bunch of different flowers, a bunch of different colors. They're all going to end up interacting with each other really well, making a beautiful pot. Okay, so I always love to put in something that is not flowering. This is sweet potato vine or ipomoea, and it it's just so lovely. Especially this pot here is actually a black pot, so this is going to be super contrasting with the color of the pot. So this will just trail down, and this is good for sun or shade. So I like to use this around those really bushy plants like your dahlia, like your geranium, because it's not going to be impacted by uh, if it does kind of get sheltered a bit more from the sun from those larger leaves. So I'm just tucking this in back here now, and I'll turn the pot around once I get this in. So again, scooping the soil, tucking it in. When you're planting your spiller plants, you want to make sure that you plant them so that as soon as they start to grow more, they're already spilling out over the side. So as you'll see shortly. So the lobelia is already aiming out, Ithamia, same thing. And then whoop, all the way over here, verbena is already out as well. Okay. All right. So let's see here now. Let's take a closer look. Okay. Flowers never look the same on camera, you know, but this is really looking good together. So I do have a little spot here that I'm probably going to put something, a little six pack. Always good to have some six packs on hand when you're doing containers. And then this up here, I know that this verbena and that geranium are going to fill in that space. So I think I'm going to let it settle. So I think what I need to do is back here, probably going to put a six pack in patient, probably like a nice bright pink. I know I have a pink. But let's face it, there's so many more pink flowers and red flowers than anything else. So if I do a pink here, that's going to kind of break up that and that will go nice with that. And then I think I'm going to let it settle. settle. So one sec, let me get that done. Okay, so I just popped in that little uh, impatient there. So I think that that looks really nice. So again, even though it's next to a red, same kind of color family, I think it's going to work out really well because you have that white. White is always good to tie everything together, white and silver. So this is right now my final product. I got a little bit of deadheading there to do. No big deal. Okay, so this is the end of our mixed container. So again, right now, it's okay that they're not fully bloomed out because you want constant color. So, you know, we got lots more blooms coming up here. Here are gonna open. This lobelia is gonna have lots coming on. So I'm really happy with how this is working out. What I always suggest for containers is let them settle for a day or two, and then you'll see if you are truly happy with it. Because of course, as you see right now, I'm kind of lifting up leaves. So they'll end up kind of interacting with each other on their own. And then you'll see if there's any bald spots. And again, sometimes what looks like a bald spot right now, come back in a day or two and it might look completely fine. So you want to make sure that you give it that time and space. So again, care for these, you want to make sure that you are deadheading. So the geranium blooms, I talked about it in our Greenhouse 5 video, you take off the whole stem, you're cracking off the blooms. So deadhe deadheading basically tricks the plant into thinking that it hasn't done its job in producing seed to produce more of its offspring, essentially. So that's why it's very important. All right, uh, you're going to want to water this every day. You're going to want to fertilize it at least once, maybe even two times a week with a water soluble fertilizer. And there we have it, super quick rundown as to how to do a mixed container. Lovely, see you next time.